Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today's a ghost story. So, okay, first thing I'm going to do is offer a deal. I've got my heaven book, which is called Five Years in Heaven. This is as a PD, this is actually the hard copy version. But if you go to Lulu, I've got the PDF of that for $25. So what I'm going to do for the next two weeks is offer a deal where if you wish a copy of my heaven book as well as my new ghost book, I can send you both PDFs for $40. So that saves about $10 buying them off Lulu. Okay, so my ghost book today, it is out there. It's as a PDF. If you look at the um, thumbnail for this video, it's there. But I do use the ghost that I got at Tawong. Here's my cover, okay, with Ghost, the Psychology of Why They Stay. Okay. Um, I've got all three photos in my book. So there's one. Here's the second one of him that night that I got him over at Tawong. No body. Look, it's all white noise. He's got no body. It's just his head. Okay. And the third photo that I've got is this one beautiful yeah you can see now he's got no body it's just his head in the photo gorgeous gorgeous photos um so i go into the psychology of why ghosts stay so if you do want a copy of my ghost book which is about 170 odd pages and you can also get the pdf of this one which is 369 pages so you're getting over 500 pages for 40 dollars now that is australian dollars and the link is below if you look at the gift jar below this is the terms and conditions if you want this the books right click that link it's called my gift jar PayPal me the the value is $40 Australian so once you've made that payment please email me at Linda at Linda .info. the link is also below and just say I've just bought you two books my username is so I know that it's you let me know who you are and I'm happy to send you both of my books as a free gift for doing it I've also got my 11 page Archangel PDF which also includes the angel numbers what does 111 represent 222 333 up to 990000 I know they said 9 then so you'll get all three for $40 if you wish that deal, okay? Let's get on now and do a ghost story. Ooh. One of the first times I went out for an investigation, it was over at Wynnum, which is an eastern suburb of Brisbane City. And the building was once used as an army hospital during World War II. But before that, it was a centre for the insane. So, when I went over there, I've drawn a very quick diagram of what it looked like. So, bear with me, I don't draw too good, okay? It was a big U. And in here was a big courtyard. And you come in, there's the front door here. And this is like a living area. There was, it was really weird. I'll go into what happened when I got there, okay? I'll just tell you first, though, what the floor plan looks like. So this is like a living area. Then it went into another living area and there was a big fireplace in there, etc. Then at the back of this, you've got the kitchen, some dining tables. And as you go across into the other section, each of these were little bedrooms. And this one here was a bathroom. And over here, there were steps going down and as you went down, it was two-sided again, just like this, where this is now here, but downstairs, with about another eight or ten bedrooms with another bathroom. Oh, so I turned up, and we all gathered in this front, like, living room. There was about 30 of us there. And as soon as I walked in, I could hear music. It was very similar to the old 1920 um, Charleston music and it was on one of those because it wasn't like a like a turnstile like we had in the 70s and 80s it was more like one of the gramophones 
because you could hear it coming. I could hear it coming through. Do, 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 do. Crackle, crackle. Okay, so I'm hearing this music. And I said to one of the organisers, I said, mate, I can hear music. And he said, where's it coming from? And I said, it's coming from over in this corner over here. So I went over there. And as we're standing there, one of the ladies that does work at this establishment, she came over and she said, why are you standing here for? And I said, because cause we were all over the other side, because this was quite a big area. I said, because there's music here. I can hear music. And she said, funny thing, back in the 30s, when this was a, yeah, before the war, when it was like a, eh, eh, institution isn't it funny how they were stereotyped stereotyped when it was an institution they used to play the music in that corner on the gramophone and they'd all sit in there and like be their happy pill for the day so that was my first confirmation that this place was haunted because what that music was was residual energy it had no intelligence but it was just like being replayed, like on a t recorder, because it was a recording, right? It was a gramophone recording. But it was just that relay over and over again of what I was hearing. So that was number one tick for me. Then they said at a certain point, we're all going to go in and have dinner. So we had to have our food before we started the investigation. So we're sitting out in the kitchen and we went through this room and I was drawn to here in the corner again and I actually went up to one of the people and I said something not right in this corner this is so not right and she said what do you know and I said it's I've got this pain around my neck it's horrendous it's like someone's strangling me and it's in there but it was a wall okay it was a wall and I said, it's in there, but it's like, uh, yuck, feeling around my neck. I can't breathe. So she opened this secret door up and I was like, what the, how did this, I, did, I didn't even know there was a secret door. The whole wall just moved. So there was no sign that this was a fake wall at all, right? It was a, it was a hidden door. So we all, a couple of us went through this door into this unknown little room. And the heaviness in that room was so strong that temperature fluctuation instantly like 15 Celsius change, okay? And I'm go standing in this corner of this, like I didn't even draw it on the diagram, but I went over to the other side of this little room and I'm there and I'm like, Ugh, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And she said, the lady that worked there, she said, well, this is where people used to come to hang themselves. If that did just trigger anybody, please know, email me, contact a friend or go and see a professional if this does trigger you in any way, okay? Mental health with me is very serious, so please don't um, just sit there, go and talk to somebody, okay? Seek help. All right, I'll get off that now. So we went back into the dining room, we're eating there, having dinner, having a little ha ha ha, yeah, this is going to be a great night. <laughs> and what they were doing... At the bottom here, they were setting up all tables with monitors and um, a lot of other recording equipment. There was about six monitors. Okay, each monitor, you know when they do like split screens on monitors? So each monitor has four screens on it. So there was about like 16 cameras that they were putting out. So what they were doing, they were putting cameras up all over the shop. I think there was two up here, a couple in here. There was one up the hallway, one here pointing up the alley, one up here that was shooting back. A couple of the rooms, they put them in the rooms. One, in, um, There was none in the bathroom, and then downstairs they put a few down there as well. So, oh my God. We had dinner, then the lights went off. They said you've got a couple of options one you can go back into this room here where the fireplace was and they were in there doing like um 
EVPs and using pendulums and stuff. And I was doing that for a while, getting some really good stuff with the pendulum in that room. But then they said, oh, who wants to go into one of the bedrooms by themselves to sleep? Because we were all going to sleep in here. You know, we had to take our own sleeping bags. So we were all up in this front area with all our sleeping bags. And I thought, I'm going to sleep in one of the rooms by myself. <laughs> so I went up. Now, this is the bathroom. And I thought, I'm going to go. In. I think I went into like this one over here. Okay. So I've got a diagram of what the room looks like. You walk in. There's one bed, single bed. There was no bedding, no mattress. It was just like a wooden bed frame. Okay. So that was there. And then on the other side was what was called a high boy. Now, if you know what a high boy is, it's a cupboard. When you open the doors, it's about six foot tall. When you open the cupboard, you could hang long dresses and coats in there. Okay. So it's high boy, a high boy, a low boy is with just with drawers for folded up clothes okay so that's the difference so it was a high boy so this is about six foot high with two doors on it right okay so I established that was my room for the night then this guy comes up to me and he says do you want to go and do some EVPs in the bathroom and I thought yes now I've got a friend cool I love friends on ghost adventures I really do okay so we're in this bathroom when you walk in, there was no shower, but it was a bath with a toilet and a sink. That's basically it. And it was totally dark. When we closed that door, you could not see two, two inches in front of your face. It was pitch black. So we get in there, establish where we're going to sit on the floor. This guy and me. <laughs> Don't do this with. I'm not saying go and just sit in a dark room with a stranger, okay, Emma. But this is what I did, okay. It's my experience. You don't have to mimic it, okay. So we're in there in the pitch black with the door shut. And the guy, start, he's got his torch on so we can get like the EVP started, the recording device, etc. And we're just sitting there. And I'm listening to him breathing because I couldn't see him at all. And I'm listening to just all the sounds around me. And then instantly, it was about 10 minutes later, we hear this. And it was footsteps. But it wasn't on the floor. It was on the ceiling above us. You know, like heel toe in army boots we looked at it well he turned his light on his torch because he had the torch i didn't stupid me not going in with a torch because i left it in my bedroom with all my other stuff and we turned the torch on so we're having this little chat and he says he says can you hear that and i said yes i can and he says where do you think that is and i said it's coming from the road And we're both like, look it up. We're looking up at the roof. And the guy says, who is it? <laughs> I said, I don't know. And he looks at me and he says, should we get out of here? And I said, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> So you know, I'm with this guy, right? He's scared. He wants to leave because we're hearing footsteps on the roof. And it was only a one-story building, by the way. <laughs> he says, no, I got to go. I, I'm, I, I can't stay here. This is scaring me too much because I can hear heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, like army boots on wooden floor above us. So we got, we leave, we turn on the light, and I'm like, freak, I wanted to stay. You know, who brought the wuss to the party, you know? We're here to find ghosts, and the first ghost we find, we want to get out of the room. Ah! So it was irking me a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, we go back out to 
we we leave the the bathroom. We come back around here where all the people are standing with all the monitors. And we said, mate, we've just been in the bathroom. You should hear the activity in there. So the guy says, well, why did you come out? And I'm like, yeah, him, blame him. <laughs> I wanted to stay, but I didn't have a torch and I was, didn't have the EVP. So we're listening back to the EVP and you could hear the footsteps on the fit ceiling. Well, you couldn't say where it was coming from, but you could definitely hear. Like someone walking up around in the room with us. And we're in this tiny little shower. Um, so, bingo. Number two for Linda. So, first of all, I've heard the music over here. Oh, number three for Linda. Because we confirmed the music. I confirmed that what happened in that room. And now we're getting all this activity in here. So, I didn't want to give up ghosts yet and go to bed. So, I said, well, let's go downstairs. Okay. Now, downstairs, it's the same as sort of this where you've got all these rooms with a bathroom, right? But it's here, because it's here. So you've got room, 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 hallway, and then room, 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 bathroom, room, 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 like this. But it's here, right? So we come down the stairs, we start walking along this corridor, and a guy is filming me. He's actually, I don't know why he was filming me for, but he's got his camera on me. And as we pass in front of this room, I sort of did this stutter thing where my knees gave out and I nearly fell over. So he says, oh, you right, picked me up and he's still recording. And we keep walking and I said, oh, yeah, I don't know what that's about. So as we keep walking, we go down to where the bathroom is because apparently a lot of activity happens in the downstairs bathroom as all it does, right? <laughs> you know, if, you, if you ever go to a haunted location, always go to the basement toilet. Sit in there and you'll be guaranteed because that's where the ghosts go to for some stupid reason, okay? So we're downstairs in the bathroom and I'm sitting there thinking, come on, if it's anything like upstairs, we're about to have some good times here tonight. <laughs> and nothing was happening. So this guy says to me that was there, that was filming me as we're walking down the whole corridor, he says, I'm going to go back and look at the footage because something's just not feeling right with me about it. So as we're walking down this corridor, he's filming me, right? So I'll put it this way because this is sort of like what it was. We came down the stairs and we're going along here and there's a bathroom, right? So as we're walking along and it was like here, well, the bathroom downstairs was right at the end. So as we're walking down to the bathroom, I fell down around here. As I fell down, his camera was looking into one of these bedrooms and on the bed you clearly see through the doorway there's a woman sitting on the bed boom he's got the footage i don't he didn't want to share it so this is all just hearsay with no evidence but what a freaking amazing apparition that we caught sitting on the bed over at this place at winter now the question here is why did i fall down right outside that specific doorway where she was so we can talk about that okay let's go there first because i there's something that i'm going to tell you about the bedroom so keep listening because this we haven't got to this yet okay why did I fall down? Because it's energy. She was in there manifesting into an apparition, do 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 doing what she does. She's sucking in all this energy around the place to, to create this manifestation. And I firmly believe that because I'm a psychic and I'm intuitive and I'm also a high empath, I picked up on that energy change which made me fall over. Or she was sucking the energy out of me little witch so she could manifest because she did that without my permission but I wasn't drained okay I didn't get energy drained okay so yeah so we've got a few confirmations all right so we're getting to the big one okay I hope you're still listening because there's a big one that's coming okay 
So, first of all, I got the music. I got the what happened in this back room, okay? We we got the bathroom. So there's three. We went downstairs. We got downstairs. Four. Then we got five. Five is the doozy. Okay, this one even scared me. <laughs> it's time to go to bed. And the guy says, that was out video, you know, with all the cameras and stuff. He said, okay, everyone, find your room. So everybody went up into this room. Everyone's up there. The guy's still here with the camera. I went into one of these. I think I went into this one over here, right? And I think there was someone up here and I think there was someone down here. You know, all those, all the ones that said, yeah, I can do this. Whereas all the little other guy, even that guy I was with in the bathroom, he ended up out here with everybody else, okay? Nothing wrong with that, by the way, okay? We all get scared. We all have our own issues, right? We don't, no one's the same when it comes to paranormal. So don't judge why people run and others stay, okay? You can't do it. So here I am up in my top bedroom. And now let me just get my other map. So I've walked in the room. I put my bag here on the floor and I've undone my, my sleeping bag and I'm lying on the sleeping bag. It's not exactly dark because there was a reflection coming up the hallway because this light was still long and it's, you know, it's not, it's only about 20, 30 feet to where I was. So there was still like a, a, a dim light coming into the room, right? So I'm lying on the bed and guess what I said? I said, if there's any ghosts here and you want me to know that you're here, please give me a sign. It would have only been about five seconds. I'm lying on the bed. This cupboard this door here starts to swing open it had the creaky noise happening too guys like this was full on sound effects happening so I'm sitting there I'm lying there on the bed and this cupboard six foot cupboard next to me the door six foot long door it starts to swing open And I'm looking at the door like, holy shit. But it didn't stop there. Somewhere in that cupboard was a ball. It was like a tennis ball, but it was rubber, right? Not like hairy, like a tennis ball. It ro I saw it because the door's now open. It rolled across its shelf. So the shelf would have been about four foot because it was higher than me lying on the on this little bed. So the bed was about this far off the ground. So that's about a foot and a half. I would have been about two foot off the ground. So it was about four foot up. The, I saw the ball roll. It rolled out of the cupboard, bounced, bounced, bounced. And it bounced straight towards over here. And I'm looking at this ball and I thought, check please, I'm gone, see you later. So I got up, sort of like, oh yeah, this is cool, I'm scared now, I'm scared now. Eee! That door opening freaked me out. So I'm now going back down the hallway. I'm down the hallway, around here, quick, quick, guys, 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 uh, you know, the ones with the monitors, my, 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 you, 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 go, 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 so they're all running, they're all running back up into my room, where's the door, where's the ball, where's the ball, where's the door, where's the door, where's the ball, where's the ball, where's the ball? Where's the ball? oh, where's, the... uh, and they're all like, oh, yeah, 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 nothing, nothing, they're all sitting on the bed with me, let's see if it does anything else, and I'm like, I can't. nothing so the guy says let's go check the cameras so 
we're coming back down the hallway. Oh, we stopped at this guy. There was a guy down in this one of these rows. Anything happening for you? And the guy said, no. And he said, oh, yeah, okay, see you, bye. We go back around here to where all the cameras are set up. Doing some rewind, you know, because there's a camera. Are you ready for this? There's a camera sitting up here and there's a camera sitting down here, right? So we go back into the feed. We rewind. Guess what? This freaking black shadow. You can see it. Clear as day. It comes out of my wall. Comes out of my door because I'm up in here. Comes out of my door. Comes down here. And goes into the bathroom. So then we go into this camera that's up here. If it's on one, let's see if it's on both. Yeah, right? Because yeah, you've got to check, you got to get this on video. Sure enough, we rewind this camera and we see this shadow come out of my doorway straight after the door opened, by the way. <laughs> it walks down and into the bathroom. The guy looked at me and he said, That was just before you ran out because you can actually see me run out just after he walked into the bathroom because I was lying there on the bo- on the bed oh god the ball's just moved where do I go what do I do now and I thought yeah I've got to go tell someone I'm scared I need I need to be around human living people for a couple of minutes <laughs> so that's my ghost story over at Wynnum um it started off as a mental asylum then during the World War II, it turned into an army hospital. Then it turned into an aged care facility. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and now it's probably demolished now, unfortunately, because that's why they were doing ghost investigations there, because I think it was on the list to be demolished and um, townhouses built on the property. Um, I will go there because I left something out, guys. When I was in the bathroom, remember there was all the footsteps on the ceiling? I was talking to a lady the next morning when we had breakfast and I said, um, you know, we were hearing footsteps up on the floor and she said, well, back in the 1940s, this building actually was two storeys tall and upstairs it would have been all wooden floors. So that was probably a World War II residual energy um, that we were hearing that night of someone still walking around up in the roof which is no longer there anymore so what a good good place to go and investigate um you know i've been down winham road a few times over the past 10 years since that um i haven't been able to find that building again i think it was demolished and townhouses put up there but yeah what a cool night that was if you ever do want to go for a ghost investigation and you're not sure what or how to go about it email me my link is below please know my ghost book is out it's 170 odd pages Um, I'm doing the deal now if you want both my books as PDFs the link is below for my PayPal please um, it's $40 Australian then just email me so I can just reply to that with my books and I'll also throw in the angel um, PDF as well as the angel numbers for you all okay as a thank you gift so there you go guys I hope that you enjoyed that one (laughs) I've got so many ghost stories might as well share them Talk soon. Bye.